Hello, everyone. Uh, it's Bryce Baker here from Access Our Permits. I hope you all can hear me. Um, we have everybody on mute right now. Um, the reason that is actually we have a little bit larger group here. If you have any questions as we go through this, um, you have a, what's called like a, a chat function there. So you should have something that should be lighting up orange on your computer screens. If you open that up, you should be able to open a chat screen. I just sent a couple of messages out a few minutes ago to everybody. And what we're going to do there is um, if you have any questions, uh, please enter them in the chat thing and hopefully then everyone else can see them. And then uh, I'll answer those as we at the end of the presentation as well. Um, so thank you guys for coming. Uh, hopefully we got everybody on here and uh, looks like we have about 15 people. So that's great. Um, just you know, we are recording this as well. This is the first time we've ever done that, so hopefully it works. And that way, if you guys need to come back to it later, we're going to try to put it up on YouTube. So if you guys have any questions, you know, or you need a, a little review on it, you can see it there. Or if there's anybody in your group that uh, wasn't able to make it to the, the webinar today, then you could share that with them as well. Um, so just so you know, hopefully you guys can all see your screen. Uh, we have you up on our test site here. Uh, so it looks somewhat like our normal Oxford screen, but it's uh, not the same one as what we test there. So all you guys who have probably done webinars within the past have, have seen this before as well. Um, so a couple of housekeeping things here too. Let me just log in here and uh, we'll work on a couple things. So we're going to sign in as our fake, uh, the county of Oxford. So I want to run through a couple of different things here. If you guys have any problems, and I know we have some new people who are using Oxcart who have used it before. I know we have a, we have at least one road commission on here that hasn't even started yet. So this is all going to be new to them. But if you guys, once you're logged in, if you have any questions or have any problems, remember you can always go down here to the what we call our knowledge base. You click on the, the question mark, and you can start entering any questions, any um, keywords you have, like route notifications. We'll put that in here. And you can find all kinds of answers to questions that we have. So here's one like our government requires not route notifications. Here you can find a bunch of information on how the route notification systems works. And if you want to, you can expand it out and we'll launch it into a new window for you. And we're actually in the process of updating this now, so we'll have some new stuff up here soon for you as well. You can also, anytime you need help, you know, you can contact us through this. You can put your email address in here, what the subject line is, and type your message, and this will deliver right into our customer service portal which then one of our agents there will be able to help you through that. I know I've talked to all you guys at some point here during the process we get when you, we brought you guys on board. Uh, I'm probably not always the best person to contact immediately with any questions because I might not get back to you as quickly as our staff will, who, who's monitoring the customer service board. So uh, this is a great way to do it. Or if you just send an email directly to support at Oxcart Permits, it takes it, it creates a ticket automatically as well. So either through this thing or you can just send an email directly from your email client to support at, and uh, that's the best way to get help from us. So a couple of little other housekeeping things you may have seen recently, just some new features that we have up. Uh, I got some notifications here. Um, this is a new feature that we built and we put on earlier this month. And what this is a way for Oxcart to communicate with you guys, any new information that might be coming up, whether it be um, there's events that are coming, there's new features that are up. So, we can put these notifications up just for all of our uh, municipal and community clients like you guys. We can put up stuff just for the, the trucking companies or we can put up global messages to everybody. And there's three levels of them. Obviously the red one is like the warning danger. Those are the most important messages. The yellow ones are kind of the mid grade ones where it might be important, but uh, we want you to see it. The blue one is really just more informational. These will show up on your screen. We will we'll assign uh, expiration dates to them. So they will end though they will clear themselves off over time. But if ever, anytime you're tired of looking at them, you can just click the X and you can get rid of them that way as well. That's a new feature that's up there. And we're also working on a new feature. It was at the request of good folks at the Royal Commission of Kalamazoo, who said they want a way to, for you guys to be able to put notifications up just for your thing, just for your page when people go to it. So we are working on that. And hopefully we'll get that up soon for you guys. Um, another thing that we have up now is our message center. So if you go, if you hover over the top of a municipality, you can click on message center there. And what this is a way for you to generate messages to any of the, the carriers who are registered with Oxcart. So you can just click on compose message. 
you put two, once you go in there, you can either click on that and you'll, you'll start seeing a list of like, this. if this was on our production site, you would see all the names of like real trucking companies, not Nathan's super amazing, really long test name carrier. But if you start typing in consumer's energy, it will uh, automatically populate that. Go in there and put a subject line in, you put your message in and you send that, that's gonna generate a message to that carrier. They're gonna get emails saying that, hey, they got a message from you guys. Um, and then they can log in and they can see the message from their dashboard and they can communicate directly to you with through Oxcart. This is really important so that you guys can keep all your communications about permits in one place. So I know a lot of you guys, there's multiple people who do permits. It's not just one person. So if one of you is communicating with a carrier about a permit and then you want a vacation and your partner's got to pick up where you left off, they can see that that thread of what that conversation was. So feel free to use that as much as you can. We appreciate any you know comments. We got we got a lot of ideas how to enhance it and make it better, but we wanted to get the, the basic version up there for you guys. So please let us know if there's anything you think we could do better with that as well. All right, so let's get into the route notifications here. I don't want to take up a ton of your time here. Um, this is uh, a pretty simple thing, how it works. And uh, I know we got some of the, the road commissions who were on last winter who did this, and we worked through some challenges with them on it. I think we get, got it running pretty smooth. So hopefully we're going to be in the same position this year with a whole lot more road commissions on board. Um, so a very important thing to do with route notifications is, is, is some certain settings you guys have access to. So if you click on your hover over municipality and you click on edit profile, there's two important choices here for you guys to look at. Down at the bottom, we have a box that says disable route notifications and one that says disable guest applications. If the box for disable route notifications is checked, that means that carriers will not be able to obviously put in any route notifications. So let's say, now you guys are a little different how your accounts are set up. Um, for the most part, let's, we're gonna use public utility permits as our, as our testing environment for this presentation. But let's say you all require route notifications for your public utility permits. During the off season, when you guys don't have your spring weight restrictions posted, you're going to want to have this box checked. That way that carriers who have bought that permit aren't trying to put in route notifications for something that you're not doing anymore. So when you guys lift the weight restrictions uh, later this year or this spring, make sure you check that box so that no one's submitting those. Once you guys are now selling the permits for that will require route notifications, you're going to want to disable guest applications. A guest application is a an interesting feature we have to have it for some of our clients in illinois who required it but it has some problems with it too anybody who applies for a permit as a guest does not have access to a dashboard which means that they, they can get their permit they could go in they could order up that public utility permit you could approve it but there's no way for them to submit a route notification as a guest because they don't have a dashboard to go into to find that base permit to put the route notification to attach it to and we'll, I'll kind of show you how that works through when we go through the workflow here in a minute. But once you guys are selling your permits, whether they're public utility permits, whether they're agriculture permits, or milk permits, anything that's one of these seasonal permits where you're gonna to need to do route notifications, please disable guest applications. That's gonna save you guys a hassle when um, someone buys that, as a, that permit as a guest and then they can't figure out how to do route notifications. What we're gonna to have to do at that point probably is refund them their money and then have them submit, create their account and submit a new permit. So we can save a few steps if you just make sure that's checked. But obviously once it's time to do route notifications, make sure the, the disabled route notification box is unchecked. So I know some of you guys have already started doing that. I know some of you guys have, you guys do route notifications throughout the year for different kinds of permits as well. But uh, as we come up here to the, the spring weight restrictions and you're ready to start doing your route notifications, please make sure that box is unchecked so that um, the carriers can actually start submitting those as well. So let's go back to the dashboard. So route notifications work exactly the same as other permits as far as the workflow goes. The trucking companies will go in, they'll apply for a route notification, they'll submit it, it'll come to you, it'll, you'll get an email that there's a route notification waiting your review. It'll show up here in your pending applications, just like a regular permit. And then you'll go in, you can approve it or deny it just like you would another permit. And then it'll send the notification back to the carrier, either that it's been denied or that um, you've approved it and it'll be attached as a PDF file. So before we go in and look at some of those, if you look at the approved permits here, 
you'll see that you have uh, your base permit number. So in this case, we run some tests yesterday and today, uh, permit number one for 2019. And we have RN4. What that means is that this permit, in this case, it was a public utility permit, was purchased and that was permit number one. RN4 means that there's been four route notifications submitted underneath that permit. So if you click on revisions, it kind of gives you a little bit better visual of what that looks like. So here's our original permit, that's our paid permit. So this is, let's say it's this consumer's energy, it was truck number uh, 52, and they bought this permit and that's the one that they paid for. And there's never any route assigned to most of these because it's just a base permit. But then that same truck has now made four route notifications, so they had to make four moves, and these have all been approved by you guys. So at any time, you can see the, the date that it was issued, the date um, that it was effective, and the date it expired. And again, you can go back here anytime and you can view that. So you can look at the base permit here. It shows up here. So this is a, uh, we got here, this is a seasonal permit, seasonal public utility transportation permit. It's got the truck information, it's got all your rules and regulations. So this is like your regular permit that can be bought. And again, that permit can be purchased as a guest, which is why we don't want them to buy that as a guest. Because once they get in, once they have it, they can't submit the route notifications. But if you look here, we have route notifications. We can go down to like the last one here, say route notification number four. You open it up and here. So it looks like the regular permit, a lot of it's the same. You have a lot of the same language on it. But you'll see it's RN4, that's how they know it's route notification. It usually doesn't have all the, have as much information regarding um, is all the weights and stuff like that. It usually has a truck number. We can customize that a little bit for you if we need to as well. A question just popped up. Will the carrier see any type of charge for the route notification form? No. Route notifications are 100% free. Um, that's under Michigan statute that there can't be a charge for those. So there's no charge for you. We don't collect any more for you guys. We don't add an Oxcart fee on that at all. This is 100% free flowing through the system. So it'll work just like a regular permit, except that there's no uh, financial transactions ever occur with route notifications. Which is something we're going to have to change for Illinois because there's some talk about moving towards this in Illinois as well but there might be charges there. So we're gonna have like our Michigan version of it and the Illinois version of it too. So in your pending applications here, you'll see, anytime you guys have probably seen this before, you know, when you get a new permit, you get the new label on it. And that just means that it's a, a new permit. Well, it's, that's your base permit, that's the public utility permit, that's your, your annual permit, that's a single move permit, whatever it might be, a regular permit. When someone submits a route notification, you're going to, it's going to have a label that's an RN. That means that that is a round notification that's going to be submitted underneath an already existing permit. Um, and you can see on this test one, if it's a guest permit, you're going to see that it's new and it's a guest permit. So if you are allowing guest applications, that's okay as long as you just keep an eye on it and make sure that when you click on that, you go to approve it, make sure it's not one of your seasonal permits that's going to require route notification. Because if you approve that, they're not going to be able to do route notification for that permit. So. In this case, yes, with this person, we checked seasonal public utility transportation permit. That should be a red flag there that is a guest to a guest application that we should probably deny that permit. And then what you can do is you can put in the denial reason, um, like please set up account. And whatever you type here in the denial reason will show up in the email that goes back to them. And they would also show up, well, they don't have a dashboard, so they won't see it there. So they will see that in the email saying, please set up an account on Oxcart and resubmit. That way they know they need to do that. And just click deny. And that one's gone. So here we have, let's go to our, our new permit here. We'll just click on that one. This is the basic workflow that a lot of you guys have already been doing. This is just a single trip permit. So this is one that's not, a one that's gonna have a route notification assigned to it. So this is nothing special about that. Let's go ahead and prove that and get that out of the way. And then that's all it's gonna leave on your dashboard is a route notification. So I know a lot of times, especially now, there's gonna, there's gonna be days where these things are gonna be coming in, you know, hot you guys are going to get a lot of them just always make sure to keep refreshing your screen and it'll always bring up the most up-to-date ones that you guys have so we've got a, a round application to approve or deny that 
It's just like a regular permit application that you'll see. Um, the end date thing is a little tricky. So you might see a fixed end date. So a lot of you guys, we have your seasonal permits set up to expire like on May 31st or June 1st. Um, you're gonna see that there. That really doesn't mean anything. It's just that it's there. Route, all route notifications are set uh, with a seven day validation period. Um, and this is something we, we worked through with the, the four or five town, or counties that were with us last winter. We're trying to come up with a, the easiest way to do this. Sometimes people want it for one day. Some people want it for two weeks. We kind of settled on seven days with the, the magic number that everyone was, was happy with. So all route notifications will have a seven day validity. And that'll be based off of the start date here. So obviously a carrier will pick the start date. You guys can change that because it is an open box. If you want to make it the 16th, go ahead. And then it'll be seven days after that when it expires. Um, so this, this really means nothing. So some permits we have at fixed end dates, the original base permit, and some have a, a base permit date that has might be a, uh, like a 14 day permit. So whatever you see here, really you can almost ignore. So the route notification is gonna be good for seven days based after the permit start date. And then you go through here, the route request. So something that's a little different with route notifications is that there is no map. Um, so they the can't submit it, it all has to be text box. And I could try to give you the big technological reason why that is, but I'll, I'll spare you it. But the real reason is because as we're, was when we bring in our new GIS mapping system, they're gonna have the ability to do that. But we haven't really wanted to invest a whole lot of time and effort into making the Google map function work on both. There's a, there's a, a, a conflict we try to do with the route notification. So we're, we're kind of passing on that for now. And by next winter, for sure, you guys will have your the new GIS mapping system, which will be available. But so for this winter, again, we're gonna just have a route request. It's gonna be text entry only. So it can be test route one or whatever it is. And this is what you're looking for. So, you know, if, if you're all good with that route, then that's great. You can approve it. And just like other permits, if you have any can conditions, you can drop those in. If you want to add special conditions to it, you can. Or if you want to add any internal notes to it, you can as well. So once you approve it, um, just like a regular permit, you're going to have the disclaimer. And once it's approved, it's going to generate that email back to the carrier. That route notification permit will be attached to the email, so they're good to go and it will drop it right from your uh, pending into your approved permits. So you can see on permit number two we just did, that's our first route notification we have there. And so this can go on endlessly. You know, I meant to at one point go back and like look at like Saginaw, let's say did a whole a ton of these last year to see how far they, they may have gotten in route notifications, like how many numbers. It will go on endlessly. You do a thousand route notifications in one permit if you need to. So. You know, they're not going to run out of them. Something that's a little tricky, and something to, to keep in mind, is that when a, a carrier submits a route notification, so like this is permit number two, when they submit a route notification, this permit is going to move from your approved up into the pending applications. So you're not going to be able to see 2002 until you approve or deny it, which will then put it back here to be approved. So even if you deny a route notification, once that's cleared, it will go back to the approved section. Um, but just understand like uh, once it's moved out of approved, it's not gonna show there. It hasn't gone away. It's just in a different place for it to see it. So we got a question here. Is there a way that we can set up a place, a custom expiration date? Cause there are many times we only want them to haul for one day and the seven days would not be practical. Um, yeah, I can definitely get with our code guy on that and see how quickly we can get a fix up for that as well, for sure. Thanks for that question, Pam. So that's really the basic of route notifications. And just like anything for you guys who've been in Oxcart, you know, the first few times you do it, um, it, uh, it it's a little tricky, um, but like anything, once you do a couple permits, it's good. Once you do a couple route notifications, you'll get the hang of it. Um, Scott from Saginaw just said that they have their seasonal permits set to auto approve. Um, so what he's talking about there is the actual base permit, not the route notification. So since a lot of time that base permit for the seasonals don't have a route assigned to them, if you want to, we can set those to be auto approved. And then what that means is that when the carrier applies for that permit and they submit their payment, it will auto approve it and you don't even have to review it. Then any route notification that they submit underneath that base permit will come to you for approval. But just that original base permit where there's not a route doesn't have to, uh, have approval so it could save you some time there as well. So feel free to fire away on the chat if you got it going there and uh, 
You guys don't have any other questions though. I want to cut you off. So some of you guys are typing, just some other things we have going on at Oxcart. Um, just make you aware the GIS mapping system is coming along quite nicely. It's it's quite a project. It's taken us almost three years to build this. Uh, we got we got an incredible crew of uh, GIS mapping people. They're the ones who built the Illinois Department of Transportation mapping system. It's going to be very thorough. It's you know it's we're making it as complex as possible, but it's easy to use on the front end. So I mean, there's a lot of uh, QA we have going on with that and. Uh, we just about got it like dialed in the way we like it. We're working on server space to make sure that it's um it's it's going to be it'll be always be there. So if something were to go down, we have redundancy on it. But you know we're taking our time. We want to make it great, and I we do apologize that it has taken a little bit longer for um, than we have said it is. But we're trying to make sure we get it good. Question: Do they have to put in their truck weights for the seasonal permits? We have had some that were not legal even during normal times that we had to deny. Uh, we can set that so they can. Um, it, if you look at, we can look at your seasonal permit and if what we have in the base application, if that requires weight there, if not, we can add it. Um, if not, we can definitely add that as a field that will go in for the route notification as well. So we can set that up a couple ways for sure. Yep, so thanks Pam for that too. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of customization that we can do so we can, um, put extra stuff in there. We, we realize that everybody's a little different on the information that they want, and that's kind of the beauty of Oxcar is we build it to be flexible for different things. So, for sure, so we can uh, we can get weight fields in there for you as well. What we're going to be doing here in the next week or so is going through everybody's accounts, all the road commission accounts, to make sure that we have all the basic information in there for you. And if there's anything special you want in there, um, you can just send us an email to let us know what, what it is that you want, and then we'll make sure we get that plugged in there or we'll communicate with you if there's any uh, challenges, anything special we need to let you know about for sure. Um, I think the ones who were on it last year, I think we got them pretty dialed in. So the ones who are new to it this year, we want to make sure that we get ahead of the game here before the weight restrictions start getting posted. So hopefully we got a couple more weeks here before most of you guys start doing it. So it's going to be pretty cold still for another couple weeks. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? If not, um, we'll give another minute here and then uh, we'll bring the webinar to an end. And then I said, well, hopefully we'll get this thing posted online for you guys soon. And uh, that way, if you wanna share it with other people, you can. Again, if you have any questions or you're not sure, feel free to reach out to us directly here and uh, we'll make sure we try to get this all customized for you just the way that you want it. Okay, well, thank you guys. I hope we look forward to a a busy round notification season for you and hopefully Oxcar, our system here is going to do what you needed it to do to make sure that uh, it makes it simple for you. All right, look forward to talking to you guys soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.